Greetings and welcome to a new video about another discrete time system stability test. This will be our example number six. And again, we will look at the calculation step by step and verify our calculations using MATLAB simulations. So let's look at our problem in this case. We have the closed loop discrete time system given, which is shown here. And this is the plant given by 10 over S plus five. So we have a pole at minus five, S is equal to minus five, it's the first order system. It is sampled by a specific sample period and the zero order hold is there to hold that sampled um, element or sampled signal. And this is the plan that we have a unity gain feedback configuration as shown here. Now, if we convert this S domain representation to the Z domain, then we will have this, which is the plan, including the sample and hold operation together. Now, in this specific example, we would like to know how, what the range is of this sample period. So, determine the range of the sample period or this sampling uh, uh, frequency such that the system is stable. So, the sample frequency is the one over that sample period. So, how do we start? What do we do? So, let's look at the solution. Let's first determine the transfer function of that zero order hold, which is then given by one minus the s to power minus st. So we have that t here over s. Since we don't know what a sample period is, we keep it as it is. That same plan with the sample and hold is given by this. So we have the sample and the hold and the plan together. We have this expression. So two transfer functions multiplied with each other. We have this, we can of course also write down this as 10 in front and then take the numerator here and denominate it together, you have this second order system. Or you can write it like that. What, 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 what the next step in here is the following. You go from left to right by actually keeping this first term as it is and you divide this in two uh, fractions. So we have get 0.2 over S minus 0.2 over s plus 5. That is done using partial fraction expansion. So that is actually done here without any details. But you can always check that this is correct by multiplying the numerator and denominator so that you get this back. Okay. We will see shortly in the next slide that this is indeed correct and also the z transform for because the z transform of this transfer function is then determined by that table and now we have the z transform of this complete transfer function given an s domain now this goes just as 10 this part the second part one minus e to the power st will be then z minus one over z so you will get then 0 0.2 over s which is then 0 0.2 times one over s is converted to z over z minus one and you also get 1 over s plus 5 will be then converted to z over z minus e to the power minus 5t. And you will also get your 0 0.2 in front. So in total, you will get this expression. Remember that this is all an s domain, so we convert that to the z domain. Now we have the plant in the z domain also. Okay, now we can simplify this because I see a z here in the denominator and also the z in the numerator. So that goes also for the second term in the parentheses. We also have z minus one here and also one there. So that goes also, but I keep the z minus one for this one. So I have this expression. By also taking the 0 0.2 outside, it will be then 10 times the 0 0.2 will be two. We can again uh, simplify this by also taking that one or write it down in this form. And we'll then make of two fractions, one fraction, which is then shown here, which will be easier to for, uh, work out later. Now we have the complete plan with the sample and hold operation and also everything in the Z domain. Now let's then look at the characteristic equation because that is important to determine what are the range of our sample period which is one plus the loop transfer function is equal to zero. This is a very general formula also used at the root locus method. The loop is in this case, just the plan with the sample hold times one. So it is just this transfer function G of P in terms of Z. 
that's this, so we equate that to zero. One plus that is zero. Now we know what this is, so one plus that gp of z. We can now multiply the left and the right hand side by z minus e to the power minus 5t. We do that, we'll get this. We also get two times this one minus five times five to the power of minus 5t. Now we can now work out the parentheses. You will get here minus one e to the power of minus 5t and also minus two times e to the power minus 5t. So in total, minus three times e to the power minus 5t. And then you have also two times one, so just two, and also the z. Now we will express this uh, such that we have isolated the z. So we get z is equal to three times e to the power minus 5t minus two. So we have an expression now for our z. That is indeed important because we would like to know what the stability range is. So for stability, we require in the discrete time system, so in the z domain, that the absolute value of our z is less than one. So that means you need to have your poles in the unit circle. That's actually the meaning of this one. You can expand it and then write it down as z larger than minus one or small than plus one. That is also possible. So the next step is work out these two conditions for this value of z. But before we move on, let's look at the Laplace transform and the z transform together because we have several things in our actual transfer function given in the s domain. Now this is a constant, so that goes actually together as we can see that the constant will be a constant. So this is the Laplace transform, this is the Z transform. What we also have is a one, which is actually here also one, but you can also see that this is e to the power minus st is actually shown here, which is of course a k there, so this is in our case just one. That means actually that will be then z to the power minus one. So the next step will be that. So these two will be then 1 minus z to the power minus 1. And this 1 over s is actually there. That will go to z over z minus 1. The same situation is here, but then for the specific 1 over s plus a, and a is here 5, that goes to this form. So we have three um, places where we need to use that z transfer from the Laplace transfer to the z transfer for the nth 2 entry entry three and also the entry six so going here you can see this will be then this so one minus z to the power minus one that is actually this one in green this part here is actually for the blue one and this part here is actually for the red one now together you can again simplify this because this one is one minus z to the power minus one that can be written in this form this is what we have determined okay now that is the proof via the table now let's continue with our characteristic equation. We have determined using the characteristic equation that this condition must uh, apply. So we have this and we need to have the z larger than minus one or smaller than plus one. So let's then run, check this and then substitute in here this three times e to the power minus five t minus two. So we have this. That means in the following, you can go to the left and then check this left condition. So you can say, I have to make this larger than minus one, or I have to make this three times e to the power minus five t larger than one, because I can place this minus two to the left, making plus two will be one. Now you can divide by three, so you get one over three is less than this expression. Taking a, a ln of left and on the right hand side, you will have this one. So you will get minus 5t will be then a ln of this 1 over 3. That means that t must be then smaller than a ln over a ln of 1 over 3 over minus 5. So you actually flip this um, this uh, this sign. So the t is here then smaller than 0 0.219 seven approximately seconds. So we have now our maximum value of our sample period. Now we have done the left side. Now let's go also 
for the right side, what we do is 3 times e to the power minus 5t minus 2 must be smaller than 1. This is shown here. Now, let's also work out this condition. We have then for the left hand side this and then plus 2 left hand side, right hand side, you get 3. Divide by 3, you will get e to the power minus 5t will be smaller than 1. I will also again now take a natural the ln of the left and the right hand side. You will get minus 5t is smaller than ln 1, which is actually 0, this one. So I actually can then write down, then so this uh, sign will then flip because you divide by negative value. So the t is larger than ln 1 over minus 5 is actually t is larger than 0. Now we have to another condition. This is actually sort of the minimum sample period and this is the maximum sample period. So I can now combine them and then say the stable system will be there if t is larger than 0 or smaller than 0 0.2197 seconds. This is of course an approximation that will be then seen shortly in great detail when we see this simulation also. So we have now determined using the calculations what are the what our range is of the sample period for this discrete time closed loop system. Now let's then also check that in the simulation results. Now the first MATLAB code, this is a script I have developed. Again the Z parameter for the discrete time system and also the S because we need to convert from the continuous time to the discrete time. This is our system for our plant. And I have now the minimum and the maximum sample period also shown here. This is of course need to be zero, but I cannot use zero in the MATLAB command to convert the continuous time to discrete time. I also place the T max to another sample period, which is a little bit larger than that one to show you that this is indeed the maximum. So if I go a little bit up in the, in the sample period, I will then get, let's say, the unstable condition. Now, this is the part where we have the where we use the minimum sample period. This is the part for the, let's say the transfer function of the plant where we use the maximum sample period. And the C to C to D means continuous to discrete time conversion. It's like the same. So three the same operations with a different sample period. This is the closed loop transfer function by using the feedback function. So feedback function will then generate the closed loop transfer function. And using the step and the polynomial or locus, you can generate also your the step response, the pole location, and also the, the root locus plot. Now, if I run now the the MATLAB script I have just shown you, you will get this. You can see the transfer function we have given. This is then in the Z domain for the maximum sample period. This is for the minimum sample period. This is for the close of transfer functions. Now what we see before, for example, here for T max minimum, so for the poles, that is actually for the minimum sample period, that the pole is 0 0.9985, so just below 1. If I go to the maximum sample period, which is that 0 0.2197 seconds, I'm also a little bit larger than minus 1, so again, very close to the border of the stability and instability region. And if I get a little bit up, that's actually that 0 0.22, so that's actually for the TZ max 2, my pole is now at minus 1.0014, so which is smaller than minus 1, so I will get an unstable system. So for these two poles, for these two sample periods, so for this one, and for that one very small to the close to 0, I will have a stable system, so the poles are inside the unit circle, but for that one, I have an unstable system because it is outside the unit circle. Now let's also check the unit step responses for the specific sample period. Now I have not chosen the zero seconds for my sample period, which is the minimum. 
So I let it go a little bit up. So I will just take, let's say, 10 microseconds. And this is then the response. You can see it is approaching some constant values at the state value. There is no overshoot at all. So this system is definitely stable, and which is, of course, what we have expected. Because this was the region for stability for our sample period. If I now go also to the uh, other extreme, which is then this uh, uh, period, sample period, which is 0 0.2197, I will have this. You can see it is quite oscillatory, but it's not unstable. So it keeps down and then approaches as some constant value approximately here 0 0.4 maybe or I think 0 0.7 maybe 0 0.67 so you will get actually this one and that is again over this less than 100% and I have a response which reaches a steady state value okay and again that means the stable for this uh, this condition let's also look at a little bit different sample period, which I have discussed also in the command window um, um, from the script. This was the sample period, 0 0.22 seconds, a little bit above the maximum. And this is another plot. Now you can see it is exploding. So it is, of course, exploding quite uh, slowly, but it is exploding because it is 400 already. So now you can see over this more than 100% and also doesn't reach any steady state value because it goes and if I increase the time here, it will only increase and increase. So now we can say this stable system here for this range is definitely correct because we have 0 0.22 seconds, which is a little bit larger than that one and I get directly an unstable system. So for this system, you can see that this is indeed important to choose the correct sample period. And it really depends also of your, uh, of your plan and also the rest of the parameters. But if you change your sample uh, frequency or your sample period, so you actually increase that, you will approach the unstable region of your discrete time system. That is, of course, very important to consider. All right, this is for this example about the discrete time system where we now considered for this example the effect of the sample period. We have done in the previous example the effect of the controller gain and other examples before we only checked the stability using jury stability test by looking at the characteristic equation only. Now we have also the parameter of the sample period discussed. I hope this clarifies the situation also for this specific situation. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time and take care.